don't live inside your head. Just listen. It's there. Like people are telling you, users are telling you you're wrong. The signals are there. You don't even need to dig it up. It's all in the surface. Just listen. Hi, everyone. You're listening to Scotty DevTools. I'm joined today by my friends, Igor and Upal from Digger.dev. Uh, Digger.dev is an open source Terraform cloud alternative. And yeah, welcome, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Jack. Nice. Super happy to be here. Thanks. Excited to be here. Um, okay. So I was like very briefly kind of working with you guys a little bit, um, like probably two years ago, something like that. Um, and at that time, you guys were like, uh, well, at the very first point, you were kind of like a, the power of AWS, but a Heroku-like experience at that time. Um, and what I remember like very distinctly is that you were very good at kind of shipping ideas and experiments and kind of using that to tweak the messaging and now things are like you're doing something like very differently um and there's three of you and you're but now with like a smaller team you're growing and i'm seeing like a ton of traction and it seems like it's going really well um so i have personally a lot of questions about like how you got from this like quite i think quite a difficult message um to get across to something that really resonates with people and is growing. And uh, I've seen like your community Slack uh, support requests. So like, it's like a, that classic, like exponential graph. Um, so yeah, like that <laughs> probably a big question, but I wonder if you could kind of tell me a little bit about that. Thanks. So first of all, it's, it's great to, uh, to hear these, uh, you know, your assessment of, of how we iterated. Um, certainly lots of, uh, lots of learning along the way. And well, that's probably the reason, you know, we're still around and, 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 and have some, some exciting signs of, of, of growth and traction. Um, well, back then we, we had this, what we thought can be called an idea. Um, probably the biggest learning is that, well, if it's just in your head, that's probably not, not a real thing. Um, and, 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 and you can, you can actually check if it's a real thing by trying to go out, sell it, get people to use it. And if they don't use it, then maybe that's not the right thing. Um, I mean, that sounds obvious, right? But, uh, it took us a while to sort of get into that actual honesty with ourselves. Like, is it working or not? And if, if you spend a month pushing something out and it's not working as in like, not growing quickly, then it's probably not working. <laughs> um, well, the, these kind of things. So we went from making AWS great again, which yeah. is, uh, I mean, okay, cool. But um, but in, in one startup with like seven people, can, can we really make all of AWS great again? Um, the answer is probably no. Probably need to, um, to do something smaller. And so we started shaving off features and well, okay, well, we thought application deployment, we're not going to touch that. Um, and then we ended up with like kind of infrastructure automation thing. Um, okay, for some reason, which is fun, um, we built it um, on top of Terraform, which is, one can say, you know, a bit of over-engineering. Um, so we ended up with a, with a tool that you can sort of connect your Git, um, connect your Git repository and get it deployed, and then customize the underlying Terraform. Well, this is cool, um, but still too big. So then we realized, well, why would we even touch the application thing? Why don't we just deploy people's Terraform? Um, and then we realized that we just built an inferior version of Terraform Cloud. Um, just, I mean, it, it worked, but like on all accounts, it was worse um, than, than Terraform Cloud. Okay, and then we thought, could we actually make it better? Um, and turns out, yes, we could. Um, and so we made it open source. And the key insight we had was like, why are we running it on our servers? It's going to be expensive, right? Um, so we thought we just reuse the CI that, that people already have. Um, and we put together like a scrappy GitHub action 
um, literally took a week, just a week, um, put it out on Reddit and people are like, oh shit, I'm going to use that. Like a couple hundred people engaged, started using, that was a year ago. Um, that gave us some confidence to kind of double down. Um, and yeah, that's, that's our product now. Rewritten in Go in, in a couple of weeks. But yeah, that's still the same. This episode is brought to you by WorkOS. At some point, you're going to land a big customer and they're going to ask you for enterprise features. That's where WorkOS comes in because they give you these features out of the box. Features like skin provisioning, SAML authentication, and audit logs. They have an easy to use API and they're trusted by big dev tools like Vercel as well as smaller, fast growing dev tools like Noc. So if you're looking to cross the enterprise chasm and make yourself enterprise ready, check out WorkOS. We've also done an episode with Michael, the founder of WorkOS, where he shares a lot of tips around crossing the enterprise chasm, landing your first enterprise deals, and making sure that you're ready for them. Thanks WorkOS for sponsoring the podcast and back to the show. That That's amazing. And like, did you, was that like a fundamental like mindset shift before that, that like, was it just, you were doing the same things that when I was there, which was like, there was like lots of kind of like, can we, can we ship something in a week? Can we make like a big splash in a week with an experiment? Um, was that like also that same style of doing things or, or was it like improved? I'd say, um, yeah. <laughs> That, that motto is, is probably the reason we're still around because um, that's what keeps you accountable, right? Like if you can't make enough of traction in, in a week or two, you better acknowledge that all your beliefs are bullshit. Like, <laughs> there's no way around that. Like there's no way around that. But doing that repeatedly led us to this sort of place of desperation when we basically proved by shipping all possible things within the original idea that the original idea is not a great idea. And so that, that, that was the first step of like, we proved ourselves wrong. Now what? Um, I mean, it, it, it was a pretty miserable place when like, you know, you, you just crossed all boxes. It's almost like a checklist. Could we try this, 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 this? And then the fullest is crossed off and nothing is working. Like, it kind of sucks. <laughs> but then... I remember it clearly. We're sitting in, in this national theater, um, Kathy, and they're like eating some chicken and like kind of, <laughs> this elephant in the room is there. Like, like um, well, and, and like we're just sitting there and, you know, everyone's eating lunch and there's this awkward silence and like, like everyone knows that, that it's not working. <laughs> um, and then we had this random debate that, that happened like, oh, is it like Terraform Cloud? Could it be better? Why it's no open source? And it all took like like maybe 30 minutes to kind of arrive at this, let's try this. Because um, that, that was pretty much the only thing that hadn't been tried. Um, and, and then the next week we shipped it. Um, scrappy thing in Python, like, like the worst possible way to build a DevOps tool. Uh, we cut all the corners just to ship it in a week. But then it actually took off. And then we rewrote it in Go. Then the, someone, someone said us, a bunch of users told us, like, why is it not in Go? Like, literally. And, and, and no one in the team knew Go. Um, well, so we picked it up and, like, we wrote it in Go anyway. Um, and that got us a bit further. Um, but yeah, same kind of approach, I guess. Yeah. Wh why do you think this one was different? Like, do you know? Well, it, it takes it takes a good deal of learning um, to to see the signs when they're there. Like if if I were to do it again on all the launches that that you've seen and and been part of and and actually uh, I mean you, you remember these you know Lemon and AWS yeah. Bootstrap and all of this. Like you can see when it's not working if you trace the funnel. Yeah, you get all the way down to retention, and if people are not sticking around. That's your answer. There's nothing you can try top of the funnel that will fix it. People are not sticking around. Yeah. That's your answer. It doesn't work. I think that's like a really key key point about like if it's like just because because I think like like Digger and all the early iterations got like a ton of like buzz, right? Like it was like product of the day and like it's quite big on like Hacker News and everything. And like a lot of people were coming through, but I guess they weren't sticking around. Yeah. 
and it, it can be known in a couple of days. So you don't need months yeah. of like more launches, more traffic, more anything. Like it, it's not going to fix it. People are not sticking around. You built the wrong thing. Move on. Like that, that is it's just hard to acknowledge. Yeah. And like, if you had to like, kind of like step back and analyze, like why, why do people stick around for like the current iteration versus like the first iterations? I think this one's points of failure, right? Like, um, I think by, by, by removing different parts of the product, we limited points of failure. Um, earlier, again, small team, um, we used to go on demos where we used to just sit with them and, and try, try to walk through the entire journey. And each time the point of failure was different, right? Like obviously, um, you know, um, small team and, you know, we're shipping fast. So corners have been cut in different places. And then we sort of realized that, hey, hey look, there's a corner cut here. Hey, look, there's a corner cut there and stuff like that. Um, but shrinking those points of failure, I think actually helped, um, helped in, in terms of, in terms of retention, if that makes sense, because, well, mm. um, well, lesser points of failure means, um, so it was sort of, if, if you want to plot a Venn diagram, it's, uh, limiting points of failure and actually something people wanted. And I think we had that intersection of sorts that we, um, with, with this equation. This is like the smallest possible thing that people want in a sense. Yep. It's, it's do one thing well, like another learning, yeah. which is a hard, hard one. And, and so many people, including us, refuse to believe it. It's, it's written everywhere and YC and like, and, and, and we're like, no, 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 we're special. But like, if you try to solve many problems and, and build a product which is defined by like doing many things, which we had this mm. AWS do it well, like functions, containers, databases, deployment, infrastructure, um, like all of these things, different, like we thought of it as features, but these were like different problems which different people would have at different times. And, and you actually just need to, to, to imagine it. A one person, single person with a name, like find their LinkedIn profile and, and see like, do they have a problem when they have a problem? And then, you know, build a product for more people like that with the exact same problem. Um, sounds obvious, but our original product had all, was all over the place. Different types yeah. of people with different types of problems. And so the definition of a product was like, many different things in one place. And that's, that's not a product, that's a bag of features. And you can't just, you know, mm. launch a bag of features and hope for like success. One thing well, as soon as we did one thing well, it actually could be any other thing, I think. It just, just pick one and do it well. And then maybe something good happens. That week where you launched this iteration, like what, what did you do? Um, in a kind of, in a very almost like boring way, like what exactly did you do, um, when you launched this? What happened was like, there were four of us or five of us and each one was tasked with coming up with a version of, so there's, there's a, there's an open source competitor, competition or a competitor tool. Uh, we see them as inspiration. It's called Atlantis and it's very well known, used by some very large organizations. Um, and so we, we actually thought of, you know, how does Atlantis do stuff? How do the other commercial vendors do stuff? And how can we come up with the smallest possible um, implementation of it in the week, in, in, in mm. that week? And then, um, all, of course, there, was, there were four people tasked with doing it. In terms of a task, it was like almost like a, you know, <laughs> a coding <laughs> challenge of sorts. Yeah. <laughs> but, then, um, but then, yeah, we, we arrived at one implementation after the end of that week. And that implementation was running it within Actions. Um, and it was called TF run at back then. Um, and then, and then actually what followed from that was that, you know, why are people using Terraform cloud if, if this can achieve what they want to do? And that is the exact same question we went and asked Reddit. And then we said, Hey, look, we have a very lightweight implementation of this. We've cut corners. It's, it's not perfect, but look at this. And then we linked TF run that we'd, we'd sort of gone over in that week and then said, look, uh, do you want to? You know, do you want to tell us why you use Telephone Cloud? Do you want to uh, go and, you know, give TF Run a spin? TF Run became bigger later on, uh, but initially it was called TF Run because, well, we didn't know if that's the, you know, pivot that we're going to be doing. Um, so it was an experiment. But yeah, and then people ended up commenting and obviously people have opinions, right? So they said, here's what they use Telephone Cloud for. Here's what they use competing vendors for. Here's what they use Atlantis for. Here's what 
Atlantis does well. Here's what Terraform Cloud doesn't do well. And then, you know, that actually uh, acts as a source of truth for us even today because people keep commenting even today. Um, I think it's it's a year plus in terms of how old that post is on Reddit, but like we still keep getting people commenting there today. Um, and and well, yeah, that that sort of gave us confidence and also gave us some 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 you know knowledge in terms of how how the tool is used in in, in the current state. And did they use it as well? These people did they try it out and like use it on Reddit? Yeah, there was there was usage for sure because it was um it was super lightweight and it was it was a GitHub action, so there was usage. Um, back then, you know, we didn't know analytics, no telemetry, there was nothing. But yeah, there was usage and there was issues flagged. There was people joining Slack and commenting. Mm. Um, that's when, so another sort of community validation for us was, um, and how we knew people were using because we didn't have anything, any guardrail set up or anything set up back then, was people joining Slack and shouting when things didn't work or commenting and, and letting us know that, hey, look, this doesn't work. Hey, look, I think this is what you need. Hey, or just, you know, contributing because they want something that doesn't currently exist and then they started contributing. None of this was known to us yet because we had never maintained an open source project before. Um, and then, yeah, we knew that people started using because they came and said, hey, look, we're using this. We're considering it using it in, in production. Um, can it have feature X or feature Y? Can it have drift detection? Um, and can it have, I don't know, you know, are you thinking about state management? You know, these questions came up. Uh, but yeah, that's how we initially knew that people were using it because even if you look at our Slack members graphs, right? like there's an inflection point of sorts in Feb 2023. That's when PF Run was launched. Feb, late Feb, early March 2023. And then from then, uh, the growth of the Slack um, Slack community in general was, you know, it was growing at a much faster rate. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. It's like, do people, because it's like, it's not just like go to the website or like, oh, this is cool. It's like actually dig in hit a roadblock, ask a question. It's like, and you care enough. You don't just give up. You like actually care enough to like go and find out the answer because you believe in this thing, yep. I guess. There, there is there's one more thing that, that told this experiment was different from any, any other. For all the time before this, there was a need to maintain this sort of, you know, they call it vision in your head. This is how it needs to be the product, the, the, the hypothetical sort of, you know, end state of this thing and it needs to be like you need to keep it in your head and you need to like see it right because because otherwise how do you know what to do with this one like no it's all there people tell you like exactly what's missing and 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 they tell you like i would use it if and there's like a list of problems and that's it there's no need to like invent some kind of new thing it's just like there um and that that's that's felt refreshing I love it so much. I, I'm going to apply this to my own, my own experiments. Um, and like, Igor, one question I had is like, I remember like, there was some point like where we were talking about like, the analytics matter and stuff like that and measuring like, does, did like, I'm talking about like at the earliest stages, like, do you think, do you still worry about like, you know, having like analytics in place or this sort of thing? Um, um. I, I, I'm glad you asked. Um, I guess I, I'll hand over to Paul because he, he can do a better, better, <laughs> better summary of that. I think. I think. I think. Yeah. Initially, we weren't very, very, you know, keen on measuring stuff. Or um, it, it's also in terms of shipping fast. You you ship the most important stuff first. So I think in speed, we, initially we were not measuring enough. Um, but that's something we've tried to correct as much as possible with, with this iteration, um, given that it's stuck, um, like, uh, you know, how many Docker downloads do we have? Obviously, you know, we've, we've experimented with telemetry. Sometimes there's been backlash from the community as well, right? Like how much telemetry is enough in open source and not like that's the age old question as well. Uh, but yeah, we've arrived at a certain, um, you know, the community has actually sh- shown us how telemetry should work. And now I think we're measuring it in a manner where we know how much weekly active usage growth is. And, you know, if it's not growing, we are aware that it's not growing. We know how much, um, let's say, um, a launch or a particular growth activity contributes to weekly active usage growth. We sort of can understand how retention works and stuff like that. I think over time, that's a learning that I think we should measure more um, and and make measuring a non-negotiable. Um, I think that's that's a learning from iterations prior that um you know um there are some corners that you cannot cut 
<laughs> if you if, if that makes sense. Um, and um, and and I think measuring uh, measuring usage and measuring retention is 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 something that um, we've learned the hard way, but now I think we're, we're doing a good job, um, and that's helping in terms of you know what features are used the most and and and, and that sort of stuff. Basically, how traditionally analytics is work. We, we we took a while to realize best practices, I guess. I'd like to add to this that it's it's um it's like it, very often people are like oh we need a full suit of analytics integrator like all sorts of segments tunes and whatever and that's it's a good idea if you can but what's needed really all you need and that's the one non negotiable you need a way to know that you are wrong in the super fundamental way like this whole thing is bullshit kind of wrong and you need a way to know it quickly. There always is a way. That's the, the truth. There always is a way to know it in a week or a month. Like, months is too much. If, if it takes a month to learn that you're wrong, like, come on, that there are faster ways. But, but fundamentally, you know, what we started with was, was like recording, um, user actions from like this, this action, um, and posting it to, to Slack. And then it was like just, just activity, just like someone did something. And then from there, we would manually compile um, monthly, weekly, whatever numbers. No analytics whatsoever in the sense. We just recorded events and just went over it one by one, you know, by hand. Um, and that gave the answer that the usage is growing. And if it didn't grow, that would be the answer that we created another piece of bullshit. But we were lucky enough to, you know, ha- have the opposite. But but we had this this core of analytics and that's that that's the non-negotiable i guess you need a way to prove yourself wrong really quickly so could you so it may so the thing that totally makes sense is that like uh you launch and then you see like do people care about it like do they make an effort um or do they just say that's cool but then once you kind of get that initial past that initial point of like okay people are trying to use this thing people joining slack and stuff but then you mentioned like if it if it's not growing, then it's also not like in your words, like it's also a piece of bullshit. Like if it's uh is that also like could, could I mean, cause that hypothetically could just be like, okay, we just didn't market it that well that week, or like, um yeah, how did you how did, did like were you kind of okay, hard... this is correct, or was it like a constant process of it, it takes like it, it you don't need to market a lot, it's more like you got some some people from a launch. Like, was it ten people? Well, yeah. most launches, even the worst ones, get get ten people. And then, like, what happened to these ten people? Like, are they still around? Yeah, that that kind of question, right? Yeah. And are we still getting usage from them? If, it, if it's anonymous, let's say, right? Same ID, like anonymized hash, right? Is it yeah. still present? And then, like, if the mm. answer is no, um. And it, it's no for all 10 of the first 10 users. You don't really need a big splash to know that something's not right. Mm. They, they just don't come back, yeah. right? Like, that's, that's it. That's the answer. Yeah. And then, like, top funnel thing, um, as soon as you start, as soon as you fix the bottom funnel, then any small activity at the top funnel just blows up. You just do a little yeah. thing. Like you just put something out there and oh shit, it goes all the way down because people are <laughs> sticking around. Yeah. Tell me about that. Cause like you guys have had a few, I mean, there's like, there's the big like, uh, HashiCorp thing, um, and the open tofu and stuff like that. Um, that must've been like a big kind of boost, right? I think there was a bigger boost right before, I think about a month or so before, before that, um, just before um, the open tofu, um, the open tofu fork happened, um, it actually started because Igor uh, wrote an article on our GoLang um, cool. saying we move to GoLang in a week, um, and and that's when actually our sort of growth journey with this uh, this iteration really? of bigger started, um, and and Prime Agent picked up, right? Like so, uh, Prime Time Prime Agent. The dev influencer, yeah. he picked it up. Yeah, yeah. He went over the entire article and he nodded and agreed with every bit of it. <laughs> and and that's when we first saw the power of YouTube, by the way, because we'd never experimented with YouTube as a growth strategy at all. Um, and so you got post that on Reddit. 
and, and then we go out for a weekend, right? Like, okay, we're, we're <laughs> off and we're not doing anything. And I start seeing these stars. So I have these, I have a notification that comes up, send somebody <laughs> star, then I see. Get, we're getting a lot of these stars and I'm like, where is this coming from? Is, you know, is this spam? Is this, is this, you know, um, where's this, what's happening? And then I realized that he got posted and Reddit has gone viral. So I thought, okay, cool. This Reddit post has gone viral and it'll, it'll sort of, a Reddit post has a life cycle, right? About 48 hours and then it'll probably subside. And I thought, okay, cool. Um, amazing. We got a bunch of 100, 150 stars. But then it kept continuing for that. So on, on Monday we returned and like, Stars had grown by like 600 or, or so. And I'm like, really? What's, hap- what's happened? And then what was the baseline at that point? It was like roughly like about 400, 500 ish. Oh um, my God. And then we, at the end of it, we came out like 1500 ish. Um, and yeah. and in, in a matter of a week or so. It's it's hard, right? Like the, the Terraform sphere in some sense or is, is smaller. Uh, like Atlantis has like 7K after six, seven years of, of, of yeah. existing and, and people know of it. Uh, like impression share is pretty good, but like the number of people who who star or the, the entire you know space is, is not as big as let's say what it would be for an open source notion alternative or an open source Calendly alternative. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Uh, so we we had this entire burst of activity from from that video. Um. It's it still brings us users. By the way, if somebody joins Slack and says, hey, I, I I watch private video. It's like you know. Right. Um, you know, it's it. I joined because I I want to I want to know how you moved from uh, from from Python to GoLang in a week. How what did that involve? Uh, and then yeah, so basically that that's a conversation starter. But then what we did, or and over the weekend, I was like, okay, we've tried to show a chain a couple of times. Let me just try a show a chain. Uh, and then the show a chain went goes to the front page as well. So it it was it was like a cascading really? effect of the Reddit post. Test. And then the prime agent video, and then uh, and then the hack news post, and then cumulatively it sort of gave us a boost in. in terms of- what was the show? Show HM was just like here's Tigger sort of thing. No, show HM was show HM open was- source Terraform cloud alternative. That's it. Ah, uh, yeah, and, okay. And that's it. Literally, that's it. And it was a Saturday, and I was like, cool. Let me try because people seem to be liking it. And we should ideally get the GitHub trending with these many number of stars in such a small amount of period, like such a small time period. And I was like, cool, let me just try. Why not? And then, and then, yeah, the, I think I, I read Charlie Munger's book and he says Lollapalooza a lot. And I think yeah. this is a Lollapalooza. <laughs> like, like, like uh, Con- there was... Converging. The, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Reddit post and then the Prime Agent video and then the show HN. So yeah, that that was the first spike of sorts that, that we had. And, and we were trending for about a week after that. Um, and a lot of users who started using then still use the girl, like they, they're attached and they keep the, the very strong opinions, keep sharing super valuable feedback. But the users we acquired in that cohort, um, a large section of them still use the girl. Wow. That's amazing. And just like kind of like stepping back for one second, like, so Igor, like when you wrote that article, like what were you, what were you thinking on that? Is it like replicatable? <laughs> it's, um, it's very different, you know, looking back at it versus what was going on in, in my head back then. Because it, it's almost like, it almost always feels like you don't know what you're doing. You're just trying some random stuff, borderline desperation, and then boom, one of the hundred attempts, you know, blows up. Because you're always in this, you know, yeah. kind of let's try, because what else? And this was one of those. Um, and, and, and that, like, why did we rewrite this thing in Go? Um, I just sort of jotted down some thoughts because it, it was a controversial decision. It's just like you don't mm. rewrite products in language from one language to another because like that's that's like from anyone who's been in engineering for like you know several years would tell you it's a bad idea. The Joel Spolsky. Yeah, yeah, like like no, you don't you don't rewrite things. Tools don't really matter as most people think they do, and like you pick something, you know something. You build something, if it creates value, then, you know, later on you'll have resources to rebuild it. That's the conventional wisdom. Um, and, and most likely you are running all the architecture assumptions anyway. So that's why you don't, you know, pick, pick the right tool. Um, you just pick a tool and then, and build it. That's the conventional wisdom. And now we went against it. Um, and I felt like that needs to be explained. Like, yeah. it wasn't even full virality. It was like, this is why we did it. 
And then it blew up because, well, it's just interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's quite like, you know, quite good to have like an opinion on something. It's true. Um, it, it's like we, that opinion was probably, and that that's also, you know, I, I think that that piece in large part, I, le- I learned from you that that the content is about creating new kind of knowledge in a sense. Not sure. I'm not cr- quoting probably, but I attribute that, that piece of learning to you uh, for some reason. Um, it, 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 <laughs> cool. <laughs> maybe something you said, um, when we work together or something like that, but the, the thought of like content is not like words, right? You, you bring new mm. knowledge to the world in a sense. And if it's not new mm. knowledge, then like, what's the point? Uh, and, and, and we, we tried that a couple of times. Um, and that kind of content actually resonated very differently compared to something that is just, you know, mechanical word generation. Like as soon as you yeah. start writing about a real challenge, which many people could like disagree with, that's when it's, yeah. yeah. I, I can, yeah. I feel like it's like that kind of like, if it's something that was like a difficult decision and you made a choice, and it was like a hard choice. Just sharing that, even if it's like, it is, is really, yeah, it's great. And it's great that you amplified it as well. Like Opal seeing like the, okay, this is, this is taking off. Like, how do we, how do we get the most out of this? Um, it is, yeah. is amazing. That was the plan. And we've, we've tried, you know, so again, read in another book that virality is, 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 is poker and not roulette, right? Like. We've tried to recreate this, this, yeah. this Lollapalooza effect, but it's extremely hard. <laughs> Things need to fall into place on its own. And it's, it's so, it, it just happened because we didn't try. But then when yeah. you try it again, like replication is, is hard. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense. You should go back to Python and like write about, okay, we rewrote it back into Python. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess just like a general question, like going back, like if you, if you were like going back to those guys like two years ago, like what would you, what would you be telling them to do? Listen, don't live inside your head. Just listen. It's there. Like people are telling you, you know, users or whoever are telling you you're wrong. The signals are there. It's not even, you don't even need to dig it up. It's all in the surface. Just listen. And you know, that's the answer. Just listen, Boris. That's uh, yeah. That's amazing. That's an amazing way to to end it. I I I can say like I have learned a lot in this. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. If you're using Terraform, like definitely check out Digger. Like, um, yeah, great guys. And uh, where can people learn more? Digger.dev. Digger.dev. Or join Slack. Yeah. Digger.dev or our GitHub repo. But Digger.dev is. A lot, lot of work's been put in, so would love for people to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. All right, guys, thanks for joining and thanks everyone for listening. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again next week. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jack.